In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a Neander. That is free motion quilting. When we do free motion quilting, we need two pieces of fabric, always cotton. I always use cotton and also the bit in the middle, which is batting. This helps to stabilize your fabric when you are doing your stitches. Make sure that your fabric is pressed. Obviously, you'll be doing this on a quilt or on a placemat or whatever you're doing your free motion quilting on. I'm obviously going to do it on a little sample piece to show you guys. I have lots of videos on my YouTube channel on how to create a quilt from scratch and showing you how to make a quilt sandwich. So go and check out those videos once you've watched me do this. So I am just going to sandwich these pieces together. So I have this piece here. I'm going to put my button piece on top of that. And then another piece of quilting fabric on top of that. Like, so if you wanted to pin your little sample, go ahead and do so. I'm just going to leave it like this. This is the Baby Lock Soprano. I pretty much do all of my videos on the Baby Lock Soprano. I am not paid or sponsored to create this video. In my top thread today, I actually have some Floriani thread. Um, I also use Glide and also used a brand on Amazon too. I like to use the same thread in my bobbin as what I am using in the needle. So what I do is I set my stitch on just a regular straight stitch and I always get the same question on my YouTube videos whenever I do any sort of free motion quilting video is what is the length of the stitch? Well, it doesn't actually matter. And the reason being is because we drop the feed dogs. So I'm going to take this arm off here. And at the back of the machine is this switch. I'm going to move it. And then that lowers these feed dogs. Now I've taken away the ability of the machine to move the fabric. I am now going to be moved the fabric for the machine and that is why it doesn't really matter what stitch length that you select on your machine. I just basically keep it on whatever stitch length that it says on a regular stitch, a straight stitch. When I am free motion quilting, I use this like open toe foot, like the whole shank comes off my machine and I put this foot on. So I'm going to start right at the side of my work here and I'm just going to lower my needle down and bring it back up again. This will then draw the bobbin thread up. So if you see this thread here, this is the bobbin thread. So we're going to pull that up and bring it out of the way. So you're going to have the thread coming from the top of the needle and you're going to have the bobbin thread. I think most people struggle with free motion quilting because they can't actually visualize what it is that they want to do. And when you think of a meander, think about a river. So when you think of a river, it's curving in and out and in and out. So when you're doing your free motion quilting, I want you to think like you are a river and you're creating a stream all the way around that fabric. It's easy when you know how, hey? Another thing with free motion quilting is, is that you want to match your hand movements with that needle going up and down. We have taken the machine's ability away to move the fabric and you are now moving the fabric. You are now creating the stitch lengths. So it's up to you to can control that speed. So if you find that you can't match it, you're going to have to play a little bit with your speed settings on your sewing machine. So right here I have the speed dial and I can bring it all the way up to the top or take it all the way right back down. I find that my free motion quilting is much better when I have the sewing machine cranked up right to the top. You may be different to me so you really need to practice this and figure out what speed that you are comfortable with when you are doing your free motion quilting. Another thing is I always find it best to leave my hands flat like this and move the fabric around. I see people doing stuff like this and I find it's not very comfortable and I always, when I change their hands to lying flat, they, are, they do so much better in an instant. So I want you to remember what a river looks like and we're going to start doing this meander free motion stitching. So 
So we just start filling in all of the fabric. And don't panic, just slow down and think about just filling in the areas and try not to have the design being exactly the same all the way across. This is not edge to edge quilting. This is, we are creating a meander and we want it to look different all over the space. And if you have to stop, just stop. Try not to stop on a curve and then just keep going. So if you find you are getting eyelashes in your work, that always happens on a curve. And I'll tell you why it's happening. It's because you are going far too fast around the corners so you need to slow down and go at the same speed that you're going on like on the straights i'm gonna take my speed down and see if i can actually do it slower down See, it looks pretty cool. So you just go around and you fill your work. Just don't panic and don't jerk the fabric. Go very slowly. Like I said, just think about how a river would look if it was twisting through the countryside. If you find that you can go one way and not the other way, just try rotating your fabric around. Just move your fabric. To the way that you find is more comfortable for you. And this is what a free motion quilt and meander looks like. And no, you don't need stitch regulation. Don't let anybody tell you that you need stitch regulation. What you need to do is practice. Practice, good machine, good quality thread, and perhaps a new needle. This is a close-up of my stitches. So this is on the front of the quilt. And these are my stitches on the reverse of my quilt. Also, tension, not a problem. I have no problem with my tension on my sewing machine whenever I'm doing free motion quilting. Again, I would like to say that you need to practice. A meander is one of the easiest free motion quilting that you can do on your quilt. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I always answer all of my questions. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.